Hey everyone, it's a new year and I'm sure a lot of New Year's resolutions for many of you will get this. A recent clinical study in the psychedelic industry that was completed this week announced an 86% success rate for alcohol addiction. Incredible news to say the least. Who is the company and how is it done? Find out now on our latest podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Dales Report and happy to be joined on the podcast here today. The president and CEO of Awaken Life Sciences, Anthony Tennyson. Anthony, happy new year. How are things? Hey, Shad. Uh, yeah, th- things are great. Thank you very much. It's great to speak to you again, and it's wonderful to get the opportunity to speak to your audience again. Yeah. Uh, how was the holiday season? It was great. It was really relaxing. I got to spend some time with my wife, my kids, and my extended family, uh, and, and one afternoon with my friends. Not as much as one would like to because of COVID, but <laughs> is that all? That, huh? That's just the times we live in. All in the growth mode, obviously, right now. And yeah, you're right. It's, it's eventually. Do you have a lot of lockdowns right now with uh, Omicron that's uh, going on over in Ireland? No, just restri- regi- reduced access. Clubs close at eight o'clock in the after in the evening. Yeah, like that. But but no, life 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 is good. Um, it was good good for us. I know you know it might have been a challenge for some people, but it was it was it was okay. Yeah, well, good to see that you're doing well. Uh, let's get right into it. On obviously wanted to have you on here today. You just announced the results of the ketamine in the reduction of alcohol relapse, otherwise known as your CARE psychotherapy intervention study. Uh, it was the first controlled study in the world to investigate ketamine-assisted therapy. The endpoints were superb. 91.66% of the patients studied show a positive response. Big, big news. So remission rates were definitive and only eight of the 96 patients experienced mild adverse reactions. So walk us through the main takeaways of this study and whether it met or exceeded uh, your expectations. Um, yeah, we're, look, we're, we're absolutely delighted. Uh, the world's first study uh, to investigate ketamine-assisted therapy to treat alcohol use disorder. Alcohol use disorder is a chronic disease, chat that affects 5% of the planet, so about 390 million people. Uh, treatment rates are, are low, and the success rate is, of those treatment rates is equally low. So uh, only about 16% of people that have this disease, so 16% of those 390 million people, actually seek out treatment. And the reason for that mm-hmm. is there is about a 75% failure rate for all treatments within the first 12 months. Wow. We are delighted with the results of this Phase 2 AB combined trial because it met the primary and secondary endpoints for this trial were met, and they have exceeded our expectations. The trial set out to assess if ketamine-assisted therapy would reduce the probability of relapse, um, and as a secondary endpoint, imp- reduction in depression and improvement in liver function and reduce the probability of fatality. All of those primary and secondary endpoints were met. The trial focused on treating people with chronic alcohol use disorder who had a 2% abstinence rate on average before they started the treatment. The people who went through the ketamine-assisted psychotherapy arm of the trial, there was an Mm -hmm. 86% abstinence rate at six months post-treatment. Going from 2% abstinence to 86% abstinence That is a groundbreaking result for the treatment of this chronic debilitating disease that so negatively affects individuals, families, and communities throughout the world. Right. There was also a statistically significant improvement in liver function, a statistically significant improvement or reduction in depression, a notable um, reduction in something called anhedema, which is the ability to enjoy life. A high score right. is bad, a low score is good. So those that went through the ketamine-assisted therapy arms of the trial had the ability to improve enjoyment of life. And very, very importantly for us, there was a statistically significant reduction in the probability of fatality, most likely as a result of reduced drinking and improved mm-hmm. liver function. Mm-hmm. We would have expected about 12.5% of the people who went through, started this trial to have died during the course of treatment if they hadn't been right. treated based upon how much of their alcohol consumption. In fact, that reduced down from one in eight to one in 80. So 
Not mm-hmm. only are we have the potential to radically improve the treatment of alcohol use disorder, we actually have the ability to save lives here. Um, and, and we're, you know, we're delighted by these results. Well, think about even the amount of suicide that's related to alcohol addiction. And you combine with the amount of substance abuse that has increased since COVID, um, promising results to say the least. So what you're finding is, you know, once somebody quits the drinking, the number one reasons of relapse, I would assume, would be thoughts like uh, depression, um, anxiety, uh, a lot of that stuff takes uh, place within the first three to six months, correct? So you're finding not only is the obsession, obviously, to drink alcohol leaving based on the trial, but the overall quality of life is obviously improving as well. Good. Correct. It's, it's the combination of ketamine and therapy together that has been proven yeah. in this clinical trial to be a very, very effective treatment, significantly more effective than anything that's currently available in industry, yeah. where you'd see typically a 75% <laughs> failure rate, significantly better than anything ever observed in any other trial. The baseline that we look at is a US trial for treatment as usual that had a 38% abstinence rate. And we all know there's a strong placebo effect in all psychedelic studies. So the placebo arm had a 70% um, abstinence rate. So we went all the way up to an 86.4% abstinence rate with the proprietary ketamine-assisted therapy arm. Groundbreaking results. And what it is, it's the combination of using the, the, the ketamine-assisted, the ketamine to disrupt the connections between the lower and mid-level functions of the brain that really house memory, driver, and salience attribution. And it's that, that you know, it's the connection. What happens in a person who's addicted to, to alcohol or addicted to anything, really, is the lower and mid-level functions of the brain, they sort of take control. And the cognitive part mm-hmm. of the brain or the upper-level function loses control of the overall system. And it's why people continually go back to drinking. And they sometimes say, no, right. I didn't realize why. I don't know why I ended up back in the pub. Yeah. I just did. So we use ketamine to disrupt the connections between those brain circuits. And during the space that that disruption provides. It's the proprietary psychotherapy comes in delivered by qualified psychotherapy or therapists that enables people to gain a new understanding and develop resilience going on a go forward basis and increase, increase the probability of uh, avoiding relapse, increase the probability of abstinence over an extended period of time that is significantly greater and significantly more effective than anything that is currently available in industry incredible isn't it yeah yeah like if you if you extrapolate the results here um, and yeah. stack this up against what's currently available in the marketplace with a 25 mm-hmm. percent success rate that results in only a 16 percent penetration rate for those treatments that then leads to everything that you've just said there relapse negative impacts on the individual negative impacts mm-hmm. on the family on the community probability of fatality either through you know loss of liver function or, or through suicide we have now the ability to potentially change that paradigm. Mm -hmm. We are going to bring this research forward now into a phase three trial. We have signed a strategic partnership with the University of Exeter and the National Healthcare Service in the UK, which is the second largest purchaser of healthcare services globally with an annual budget of $200 billion. We announced a strategic partnership with them back in Q4 last year. And the sole purpose of that partnership, or one of the sole purposes of that partnership, was depending upon the results of this phase 2B trial, was to work together to bring that forward into a phase 3 trial as Mm -hmm. part of the strategy to secure what we call marketing authorization, or in the US and Canada, we call regulatory approval for ketamine-assisted therapy to treat alcohol use disorder in the UK. And we'll start in the UK, and if we're successful with that strategy in the UK, we look into other territories. But this is really, really exciting. We are close to moving from a phase 2B into a phase 3 trial with a method of use for ketamine that has been proven and now published in a high-impact journal to be significantly more effective than anything that's currently available for the treatment of this chronic debilitating disease. We've published it, and we're now in the process of bringing it forward into phase three as part of our strategy to democratize psychedelics, 
and democratization of psychedelics means running clinical trials, securing regulatory approval or marketing authorization so that people can access these services through the public health care system in the UK or the EU or through the insurance model in the US. Hmm. Wow. Very impressive, to say the least. You look at SSRIs, and they were obviously beneficial for people back in the mid-80s, and a lot of people I've spoken to is like, it's 40 years ago. But there are things that are related to alcohol, and I don't want to sit here and say that you're going to replace some of the old ways of people like that. That's completely fine. But something like an Alcoholics Anonymous was, I think, established in the 1930s, which is almost 100 years ago. But it's very promising to see that there could be other options for people um, related to this, knowing that, you know, it's a disease that affects, as you said, uh, how many people across the world right now? 390 million people are affected by alcohol use disorder. Yeah. And that's just, that's the, that's 5%. There's another 12% of people whose lives are negatively affected by exactly harmful drinking. So it's yeah. a big, big problem. And but then even think about the domino effect of what an alcoholic and the effect it has on family members as well. And it just branches out from there. Correct. On family members, but, on work, on communities, on their own, on their livers, on their own, in the individual, on the liver, and the, the health complications that that then yeah. cascades downstream and the cost that that has to the public health care system. Yeah. Um, and then because the treatments aren't always, the current treatments aren't always as effective for all people as they cost because it should be. And yes, Alcoholics Anonymous does a great job for some people, yeah. but not for all people. Yeah. So you end You're up right. having people <clears throat> on, the, on, on, on repeat treatment cycles. And again, that's often funded by the public health care system over this side of the water and in Canada as well. We think we can improve the effectiveness and efficiency for the alcohol addiction treatment industry. And we are asked hmm. what we believe the potential of a paradigm shift in the treatment of alcohol use disorder. And if we so you believe the, potential, the, sorry, go if, ahead, sorry. No, just if you think about the potential that has for reducing the expenditure of the public health system yeah, of course. On, on treating it, we, we really are quite excited about this. Yeah, so this potentially could be a gold standard. Great job, by the way, and that's very, very promising for people that, you know, in a time of need and even more so now. Uh, as you said, the study taking place, University of Exeter, a pivotal and important uh, uh, next step, um, moving into a phase three trial for the company. Uh, how how big is this? Um, and I don't want to give any comparisons to other companies, but right now, uh, Compass Pathways is currently the only other company in the space that's in a currently a phase three trial. But uh, how big is this for the company if and when uh, you do move into a phase three related to this? Well, I think it's it's significant today, Chad, because we are yeah. a we are one of the only we are one of the few companies in the psychedelics industry that have a phase two B trial completed and mm -hmm. published. There's Max and there's Compass, I believe. The significant difference is that our phase 2B trial has focused on ketamine. Ketamine is an mm -hmm. approved medicine for, as a painkiller and as an anesthetic. Because it's an approved medicine, we can deliver these treatments today in our mm -hmm. clinics in the UK and Europe. Additionally, through our planned licensing partnerships business that we are going to be starting in a couple of weeks, we can license this IP, license this treatment methodology, and teach and instruct addiction treatment practitioners globally how to deliver this methodology in their clinics. Therefore, mm -hmm. we are in the, in the position to empower the alcohol addiction treatment industry globally to be more effective, to enable them to treat individuals more effectively and also potentially at a lower cost than what they are currently doing. And we believe that has the ability to transform the alcohol addiction treatment industry. Um, and, and we are really, really looking forward to being able to deliver these services today in our clinics, in the coming weeks and months, through our licensing partnerships business, starting off with the US and Canada. Um, and then also in parallel to that, running this through a phase three trial in the UK so we can secure marketing authorization or regulatory approval in the UK mm -hmm. and enabling us again to help as many people as possible as quickly as possible um, 
particularly for those providing hope <clears throat> for those people for whom the current treatment methodologies just just don't work. I have to ask, you know, you have people like Dr. Uh, Professor uh, David Nutt, obviously uh, associated with the company. Uh, what's the, been the feedback based on the results that uh, were proven with this trial? And um, uh, who have you spoken to? And again, like if I'm, uh, you know, potentially looking at whether I'm affected by alcohol use disorder or at the same time, if I'm an investor in this company, uh, what's the big takeaway and the promising outlook uh, based on some of the conversations that you've had uh, on these trials? Well, so, so if you break this down into the different stakeholder groups, let's start with the patients first, clients first, because okay. they're the most important people here. It's the core purpose of, of yep. why we do what we do. Um, I would encourage if anyone in the UK or in Norway, because that's where we have clinics right now, if they have a problem with alcohol use disorder or a family member and they want to learn more, please do get in touch with us um, at awakenlifesciences.com or clinics.awakenlifesciences.com. Um, find any information they, they need there or get in touch direct, directly with any of the team. Um, for practitioners in the US who want to learn how to utilize this methodology in their clinics, again, please get in touch with us directly via, via our website. Um, and then for, for, the, you know, for the public health care systems, um, we're, we're in early stage discussions with, with the public health care system in the UK to work out how that we can scale this solution or scale this treatment within, within their infrastructure. And then lastly, for investors, what, what does this mean for investors? Well, mm -hmm. like I said, we're one of only the few, few companies in this industry that have published mm -hmm. the results of a phase 2B trial. We are unique because the results of that phase 2B trial can be commercialized today in our clinics and in the coming weeks through our licensing partnerships business. So I'd suggest any current shareholders or any prospectively invest interested investors get on our website have a look at our investor relations site get in touch with me if you want to learn more um okay. but you know just do your own research compare our market capitalization to the capitalization of the other companies mm -hmm. in the sector that are, are at this level of advanced research and you'll notice the difference and you can potentially see there's 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 a there's a, a value creation opportunity for investors in awakened life sciences well said, Anthony. One last thing before I let you run, I do want to touch on was the uh, voluntary lockup agreement extension where 46.1% of the issued and outstanding shares held by your team, the board and lockup shareholders was extended by six months until the middle of 2022. So what was the rationale behind all that? And I guess what should shareholders interpret uh, based on the extension? OK, so, so let's take that in reverse order. Shareholder, current and future investors should infer from that or should learn, take from that is the fact that the, the core of the company believes in yep. the long-term future value of the company, the long-term ability for us as a management team to create significant value for shareholders. And um, those lockups for the majority of early stage investors has not just been extended by six months, but it's just the beginning of the unlocking has been extended by six months. And then it trickles out over the next two years. And so really gotcha. what this is, is a massive vote in confidence of the future, the future potential of our organization um, from people who really know it from, from the inside. And I think people should get some comfort from that, from the, the responsible attitude that our founders, our, um, our lockup shareholders um, and, and management take towards uh, creating sustained shareholder value. Nicely done. I appreciate the update. And uh, honestly, Great work with the trials and uh, great to see a lot of the positive feedback. But I appreciate you uh, connecting with us here on the podcast here today. Chad, absolute pleasure at all. And uh, looking forward to coming back on uh, at some point in the future. Thank you, Anthony. 